Hey, it's Lauren. Thank you for being here. Today I'm going to be doing my 2018 beauty favorites, a recap of new releases that I picked up as well as products that I really got into and enjoyed this past year. This might end up two-parters because I try a lot of products. I love products, I try a lot of products, so therefore there ends up being quite a lot of favorites. Lots of holy grails and things like that that I've been into for many years that won't be making an appearance in this video. Uh, and I'll link my last year's two-parter video down below. I'm gonna start out with makeup because that's the thing that is closest to me. And I'll start out with base products. Now, this could probably just be like, if I had to like narrow it down to just like two or so products, which would be really, really hard, this would be there. Uh, and it is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Gonna start out with this one and keep it really short and sweet because if you watch my videos, I've talked about this a bunch. It was a new release from this year. It's a multi-use product. A lot of people thought it was gonna be a foundation, but it's kind of this hybrid product and I really like that. I feel like this was one of those really great in-between products that I feel like a lot of brands are now gonna come out with because of how great this is. So we'll be seeing, I bet, more brands come out with versions. It's like a multitasker face product. So I really love this. I think it's beautiful. I have a whole video on how to use it if you are curious, which I will link. And uh, I'll, I'll stop there since I know I've talked a lot about this, but uh, top, one of like the top, maybe top two of my favorite products uh, of the year. One of the best releases. I personally think. I did play with quite a few different bases over the years and there were there was a number of releases, not a crazy amount of releases of foundation, not in anywhere near like eye products that we saw this year. But I feel like the favorite foundation that I tried out this year was the Lancome Skin Feels Good Foundation. It says that it's a hydrating skin tint and it's definitely more coverage than a skin tint, but it's very luminous. It almost has that kind of like gel-like feel similar to that Bare Minerals one. It makes your skin look so glowy and healthy and dewy. It's really nice. Um, I say I only have like maybe a third left of this product. I kind of let it sit on the back burner for a while because I got back into the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation. Now I know this is an older foundation. It's been out for a while and I tested it out years ago and I just didn't care for it, but I got back into it and I love it. So this is definitely one of my most reached for foundations. And now I, I switch back between like what kind of like mood I want for a finish on my skin, but it's definitely been the year for dewy, fresh skin and both of these products create that really, really nicely. And then these are both complexion related. The first one, this is the Dr. Hauschka's translucent bronzing tint. Now I know this isn't particularly a new product, but I got it like as a stocking stuffer for Christmas of last uh, of last year, um, of the previous Christmas, and just have used this almost daily. You know, I probably took breaks here and there, but this is another really great multi-use product. Now it is a bronzing tint, so you can use it all over as a tint. You can use it just as a bronzer. It works really well for mixing in, warming up foundations. I liked to use this underneath foundation to do like a pre-contour. It's one of those really good kind of products to do that on top. Uh, touch up later if I want to like add some more warmth to my skin and I don't want to take all the way like all my makeup off it just uh, is a fantastic product and you get so much product in here now I almost didn't include this product but because it's become such a staple for me and I keep throwing it in my purse I pretty much reach for it every day I was like you know what since I picked this up I've been using it all the time and it is the hourglass veil retouching fluid now I'm including this because I feel like it was kind of an overlooked product this year it again is kind of similar to the Charlotte Tilbury where it's an in-between product it's not a concealer fully it's not a foundation it isn't a highlighter it's just kind of all of those things and it also as it says retouching fluid it was one of those great on the go sort of fixer upper kind of products i think i talked quite a bit about that in my like beauty on the go video and this this does that really well and i feel like this is just like a really good kind of like 
skin first kind of person's makeup. That's pretty much it for like base stuff. Oh, except I wanted to talk actually about the two new colors that came out of the Glossier Cloud Paints. I had the other ones in my favorites video from the previous year and then they came out with both Storm and Dawn and these have just like eclipsed all of the other cloud paints that I own and actually they have become like probably my most reached for blushes. I love both of these colors and also just these colors have been really um a really good like color indicator of what I've been into in terms of makeup. I've really loved this kind of rosy terracotta color and how it can blend out. It can look really good all season. And then Dawn, I never thought I would love an orange blush so much um, or just at all. And I feel like this has like kind of been the gateway for me getting way more into orange blushes. I love how fresh it looks especially with a red lip. I feel like it's like the perfect combination to keep uh, a red lip looking very alive and not like too, um, what's the term, like of one season. Like red lips can easily look very holiday and this just kind of like keeps it all year round in a way. Complexion wise, there's those are those guys and then i have quite a few of course eye and lip products that i want to talk about i'll talk about lips and then i'll get into eyes specifically uh some of my most reached for lipsticks this entire year they weren't actually new releases this one is lancome 277 and it is a beautiful dusty cool tone nude it is more than halfway gone at this point this is just so beautiful and kind of a slightly deeper more brown version is hourglass lip stylo in achiever a really beautiful comfortable formula both of these are kind of like higher shine really moisturizing my lips but better but because they're not too warm toned i felt like i could wear these with anything uh, I definitely found kind of like my favorite nude lip tone with these guys. And then Kosas Undone. This is definitely one of Kosas' considered more nudes, but on me it ends up looking quite more like a, a terracotta, a little bit more like a step up from a new kind of everyday color. So if I want something that has a bit more going on, this has been a color that I have reached for quite a bit. It's easy to wear, but just like more than just like a nude lip, if that makes any sense. In general, this has been a year where I've experimented more with makeup. This look is not <laughs> the best like uh, indicator of that. And I definitely don't wear that kind of makeup too much on on my videos, but I've really enjoyed playing with textures and applications and color and things like that. And this la um, last couple of lip products is definitely um, kind of an example of that. I really love lip powders and they're like eyeglasses where they're just, they're not for everybody, but I've really loved them. And this one that Chanel came out with, I think it was actually at the end of the previous year when this came out but i didn't get my hands on it until spring i really had to hunt it down so i'm not sure if it's still available it was i think a limited edition product i got it in 410 which is like this really beautiful bright kind of orangey red and i really liked this combination because you could do something very blotted and almost just like a tint or you could do something extremely bold. And I just really loved the texture, the feel that it created on the lips. It was a really beautiful look. And then also NARS, this is like, I would have to say it was like my favorite limited edition like collection that came out. I only picked up this, but it's the NARS Airdem Lip Powder Palette. And I really love the different colors and the way that the different sort of combinations that they create from mixing them as well as just like the packaging on this is absolutely amazing and i do keep it stored in the box because i bring it out for like very intentional so it's not something like i just keep out so this definitely was a year of an insane amount of eyeshadow palette releases and i bought my fair share of them but these ones have been my most 
my most reached for and most like kind of beloved in a way. This came out Christmas of the previous year and I ended up picking up in January and it is the NARS Wanted Eyeshadow Palette. This is by far my most used eyeshadow palette of the year. You can see how kind of like destroyed it is. There's some really deep indents. Not sure how available this still is. Last I checked, I felt like you could still get it on a few kind of random retailers and like Ulta. So if, if it's still available, I'll link it down below. But I was really impressed with this. It has this really interesting duochrome shadow right here that goes between like gold and red and has just like all these kind of different speckles. So I, I really loved the shimmers in this. So I actually did pick up the new NARS Limited Palette, which I'll talk about in another video, but that is just like pure, beautiful sparkle. And this is a really great mix. Um, so really love this palette. Another everyday palette that I got really into, which a lot of limited edition stuff in here. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Stars in the Eyes palette. Very romantic palette that has a really nice mix, again, of textures, really beautiful different shimmers. And then these three right here are probably the stars of this palette. They're so beautiful and really easy to work with. And then lastly, I ended up getting so much use out of and just love with experimenting with makeup this year. And it is the Sephora Editorial Pro palette. I think this was like had a small moment and then was gone. I had purchased a few like kind of like random color things and I have a few singles but I just wanted like a big thing of color that also had like a nice mix of things because it also has these I don't know if they're holographic but it's just like these ethereal shades right here that they just kind of look like white and chalky in, in the camera on the camera but they create that kind of like illuminated look and then these different shimmers are super beautiful and then yeah, this was just a lot of fun to play with this year. I got quite a lot of use out of it and just a really, really fun palette to, to play with. And then um, lastly, eyeshadow wise, two singles that I wanted to mention, like the lip powders. I really actually love eye glosses. They're not the most practical thing and you have to have like a set kind of like intention for wearing them. And I have a few, I have the uh, Kevin Aquan and I have a couple of other like indie brand ones. But Flesh came out with quite a few of them this year, and I've talked a little bit about this uh, this one. This is the non-limited edition one, and it's just this really beautiful gold kind of red reflect. And then lastly, this is probably one of like my most complimented things whenever I wear it, and it's the Hourglass Scattered Light Glitter Eyeshadow in Smoke. I have used a ton of this. There's quite a little dent going on with it at this point. I'm wearing some of it today. Just one of like my most reached for, like wanting to have like a little bit something more going on with my eyes, but don't want to think about it kind of eye eyeshadow. It's really easy to blend out just beautiful and then lastly makeup wise i wanted to mention the milk makeup kush mascara again a lot of mascaras were released this year and i picked up quite a few of them and i liked most of them that i tried but the one that i definitely loved the most was this one it is kind of like a really thick full mascara but what i really liked about it is i never really had um, or have since I'm, I'm wearing the small one right now never had an inkling to like touch my eyes oftentimes some mascaras can like make my eyelashes just feel Just irritated so I'm constantly ending up touching my eyes and I think it's sort of maybe how it's made or something with it I don't know if it's the CBD that's in it or not or um, but it uh it has felt really nice and very voluminous. My issue with it though is although the packaging is beautiful, it is way too heavy. So this ends up not being something that I take with me even though I got the mini. It's still way too heavy because it's like this solid metal and I dropped this on my foot a couple of times um, because it's kind of slippery and then it hurts terribly because it's a giant cylinder of metal. Uh, looking at the viewfinder, this video has already gotten pretty long, so I am going to end up breaking up this video into twos. So I next up will have the skincare and uh, some body favorites in my next one. So I hope you enjoyed this makeup loves of this past year, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.